Hey, we're back with another Lick of the Week. It's September 29th, and I'm continuing the single string primer series. Uh, I'm going to leave G for a while because I think I've given you enough basic information that you can play the, the G major scale between frets 1 and 5, and you can also include some chromatic notes. And you should spend a lot of time practicing uh, finding those locations here between 1 and 5. Let's move to a C major scale now. Since this is a primer, I don't want to get too far entrenched in G ideas. Let's just go ahead and move into C. Now again, I'm going to identify the C major scale between frets 1 and 5 to help me locate the tones I need to play uh, major scale based ideas and then we're going to add chromatic notes in at some point. But for this week's video, let me just concentrate on C major scale. Now, uh, I'm going to identify the lowest note I have out of the C scale, which is the D note open. So the, my open fourth will be the first note. And this is a mode of the C scale because we're starting out of order. But I want to find the, all the notes I can on all the available strings. So the fourth string open is my lowest note that belongs to a C major scale. And again, there's a lot of different pathways, so we're going to explore some of that in this video. Let's start with pathway number one. Fourth string open. Second fret third string is D, E, F. I'm going to switch to the third string for G. A is the second fret. Open B. Here's my root note, C. So I can stop there, but I'm going to continue. Open first is D. E, second fret, third fret is F, and then G will be my uh, last note at the fifth fret of the first string. So I'm not going any higher than the fifth fret. So here it is, pathway number one, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that allows me to play part of one octave going into another. So there is pathway number one. Let's experiment, try alternate pathway. D, E, F. G is going to be on my fourth string, fifth fret. Then A is here, second fret of the third. D is on that string at the fourth fret. C is one fret higher on the third string at five. D is going to be uh, third fret of the second string. E is the same string at five. Switch to the first string again. F and G. So there's pathway number two. You notice something interesting about that pathway is I only had one open note. Every other note was closed. So just like your experience with the G scale in this fret position area, you have the option of playing your notes a combination of closed and open, kind of like uh, what we mimic with melodic style. Or you can play the majority or all of your notes closed, which is really the cool thing about single string style. And like we talked about before, there are a lot of different pathways. You probably have a two or three fold increase in the number of options you have as far as what strings you can use and what fret positions to play single string scales. So let's try another pathway. I'm going to start with the open D again. E, second fret, F, third fret. Then G is going to be open third. A will be second fret. All right, now my B will be the fourth fret of the third string. D will be open. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> C will be the uh, second string first fret. And then D is open, E on the first string, F, and then fifth string open will be my G. So here's pathway number three. Right now, uh, I may not have mentioned this in the G primer videos, but I should have. I just realized this. You should also try to practice these scales in reverse so that you have, you know, ascending, going up, and descending versions of the scale. And I always play with a metronome so that you, you know, get good timing habits. So let me fire the old metronome up here. 
let's see here. A little too fast. We're going to play eight notes here. I want you to build. Whoops. This is my old timey metronome. with every pathway. Missed another. <laughs> but you get the idea. So uh, use the metronome to make sure that you uh, have good overall timing when you play that. And try to find as many pathways for the scale as you can. Um, Try not to skip octaves, which means don't go from, you know, to a note, even though it's a scale note, make sure you try to stay in the same octave. Because what I want you to do is get really familiar with the pathway, and you can decide that you want to play the majority of the notes and stay within the confines of this area of the board, or you can decide to go here. But... The ultimate goal, just like for G, is for you to find as many different pathways for C major as you can. Use as many combination of open strings and closed strings. You may decide to play all the notes closed, but you may decide you want to, you know, you can just do anything you want with this as long as you're staying in the confines of the C major scale. Now let's take a few simple ideas from the scale and make some easy licks. Uh, since these are C licks, uh, they're going to be primarily rooted in C major, right? So here's a real simple lick that is just scale based. C, D, A, B, C. Second string, first fret, open. Uh, third string, second fret, open B. E, D, C, D, G, D, C. Alright, now try the four string. This can also serve as a transition link going from G. A nice transition lick to get from you know one one chord to the next. So if you're playing in the key of C, then you could use this scale pathway to cover G to C, which is pretty nice. So that's the four string open E F G open third A second fret of third open second is B C. You could walk your way out of a G into a C on the first string. F on the third fret of the first string. E, D, C on the second. Open B on the second. Open first is D, C. stay in one area. Play around with the scale notes in as many different pathways as you can and you'll start hearing the ideas. You'll hear a lot of cool ideas that would pop in your head and the most important thing at this point, since it's the primary, is to make sure that you recognize what the scale notes are for the C scale, and that you can find them. And what this is doing is just like for the G series, this is going to be training your ear to hear those intervals so you'll know you're in C major scale, and memorize the locations on the fingerboard in this one area. And then you can come up with some pretty cool licks from that. So add this into your practice regimen, and next week, 
we're going to add some chromatic intervals to this to make it a little more exciting. So thank you. See you next time.